how to start making a better trade in forex a part 1 how to start making better trades in forex a part 1 good morning good afternoon good evening bonjour bonsoir mes amis good morning guten tag guten abend for those of you who are new to us we are the TSTW uh, 24 uh, traders and our website is www.stochastic-magdi.com The title of this video is how to start making better trades in Forex uh, part 1. In this part 1 I want to share with traders very simple trading tips that traders will start applying to improve okay, their trade when they are trading uh, currency pair, okay? We are looking at the euro dollar on the weekly charts, all right? And I want to talk to you about how you can make a better trade in Forex, all right? Now today I want to concentrate on key levels and market pattern, all right? So if you have been following us for some time, okay, you already know that uh, I talk a lot about, uh, okay, key levels and market uh, patterns, okay? So recently we can see that uh, the euro dollar was going up, okay, it was going up and it reaches the key level of one, uh, in the zone of 11538, all right? So if you are following now, you also see that uh, on my chart, I have many lines on my chart. These are key levels that I want to monitor, all right? In order to make better trades in Forex, one must uh, take a signal on or near key levels. So for instance, if you are using uh, MACD, and MACD give you a bullish signal, you want to ascertain that the signal is uh, at uh, a key level. So for instance, uh, if you receive a bullish signal, you want to make sure that the bullish signal is uh, on or near a support level or a key level, okay? If you receive a sharp signal, you want to ascertain that the sharp signal is on or near a resistance level or a key level, all right? So we usually find those key levels on the yearly chart, quarterly chart, monthly chart, and also on the weekly chart, okay? Because professional traders are trading on or near the key levels. But very often, we have noticed that sometimes traders will see, uh, okay, will receive, okay, a trading signal, and they will just take it, okay? They are taking a signal because it's a signal, but one of the mistakes that they are making they don't check whether the signal is on or near a key level. Why do we want to take a bullish signal on or near a support level or a key level? It's very simple. So for instance, if I want to buy here near this red line, okay, for instance, the price here, and I want to buy, the, if I receive a bullish signal here and I'm taking it, it's good for me. Why? Because I can place my stop loss below the key level. And also, the professional traders are likely to take that bullish signal because it's on or near a support level or a key level, okay? On the other hand, if I receive a sell signal and the sell signal is at a resistance zone, all right, or a key level, there's a high chance that the professional also will be happy, all right, to sell at the key level, all right, because like I said to you before, we don't want to be the first person to buy or sell. We want to see, okay, the big market players sell first, and then we want to sell together with these big market players. So when we are trading the euro dollar or any other currency pair, when we are trading forex, and we receive a sell signal or a buy signal, a bullish or a bearish signal, we want this signal to be on or near a key level. The reason is that the professional will be happy also to take that signal. We don't want to be the first person taking the signal, and we don't want to be the only person taking the signal, all right? Sometimes you may see a buy signal, okay? You will know that this is a buy signal, all right? But you, if you, if you check carefully, you may notice that the signal uh, requires, okay, a high 
okay, stop loss, or it require the risk is too high because it's not on or near a key level. The key levels, okay, uh, protects the trade because if you are buying on or near a support level or near a key level, that key level represents our support level. So our protection, okay, the key level represents our protection. So what we usually do, we hide, so to speak, our stop loss, few pips below the key level because we don't have to use too much stop loss if we are trading on or near a key level. So in order to improve your forest trade, all right, so the market is open, draw your line, as I say to TST W24 traders, for instance, a simple method is to go to the, the third best time frame, draw your key level on the third best time frame, and then switch to the first best time frame. And if you are taking the signal on the first best time frame, you want those signal to be on or near the key level of the third best time frame. We can also use the key level, like I said to you, yearly chart, quarterly chart, monthly chart, weekly chart. We draw them, and then like you see now, I have all this line now on my weekly chart. If I go now to the 10 minute time frame, we will see, okay, hopefully some of uh, this line. If you can see, you see, Yes, you see some of my line from the weekly chart are here. So here you see the price D below the red line here. Okay, the red line that I've drawn on the weekly chart. And it went back to retest my year, okay, red line here. Because I'm on a 10 minute time frame, I know that this line here is a key level. If I receive a sell signal here, I will be happy to take it. And I will use like a 15 pip, a tiny stop loss to control the trade. If the price goes back above the key level, I will be prepared to close the train because it's a key level. Normally, that key level should protect my trade, but if the price went back above it, it's telling me that that key level is not protecting my trade, and I can, okay, I can remain the trade and be taken out, or I can close that trade before it is too late, all right? So go to the weekly chart, monthly chart, quarterly chart, draw the key level, the trend lines, the horizontal support and resistance level, the Fibonacci extension level that are revealing to us the hidden support and resistance level, and then switch to your lower time frame. And then if you are using a valid trading system, take the signal on or near those key levels. You allow you to control the risk and also not to use too much stop loss, and you are likely to make excellent decisions. The good thing about trading around key level is that professionals are trading around those key levels, and if they are selling, you will sell together with the, mar the big market players. Okay? It makes sense? All right? So this is very simple, okay, tips traders can use, okay, to make a better trade in the forest. All right? Another thing that I want to tell traders, apart from the key level, we talk about, uh, all right, the market pattern. So look at the euro dollar, okay? On the weekly chart, recently I said to traders that the euro dollar is oscillating. You see, it's oscillating. See here, before it was, uh, you see here, it was stuck between this red line and this red line here. Now it went up, and then you see the key level here that we have 11538, and that's where traders, professional, sold it. They sold it on or near the key level. So another thing I want you to understand when you see the key level like this, you have the key level like this. Check also whether they have sold it there before. Ask yourself what has happened at that key level before. So you are looking on your left hand side, and you can see clearly here. This you see the you remember what I said to you the shadow of the candle and the tails are telling us what has happened before. So here they sold it before here at that level of 11538. So okay, weeks uh, two weeks ago. You see that the price went back again to the same zone, near that zone, and they sold it again. So if I receive a sell signal on or near the level of uh, 11538, I will be happy to sell together with, okay, the big market players. It makes sense? All right. The tail of the candle also are telling us, okay, uh, that you see here, this zone here, you see here? Okay, you see the tail here? All right. The green line here, all right? You see this, uh, the tail of these two candles here, it's a key level. Price, you see how the price ran away? It went below it and then went back above it and finally supported it. You see the tail of this candle? It pulled back to retest it here. After this candle went above the green line, it pulled back to retest it 
and then boom, this tall candle. Around these key levels, that's where you want to make your decision. The next thing I want to clarify with traders, talking about uh, how to start making a better trade in Forex, one must always okay, check the market patterns. So if you are new to us, there are three market patterns, a rising channel, a declining channel, and a horizontal channel. On this weekly chart, we have a bigger okay, horizontal channel. So if you consider okay, the pink line here as the lower part of uh, okay, the bigger horizontal channel, and the green line here is the top of the consolidation. So the price is oscillating on the bigger channel. There are other smaller channels. I talk about the, the red one here. Now we have another bigger one, the green one, and the pink one. Now the price, you see, is went back to the top of, uh, recently went back to the top of uh, the bigger channel. So when the price is consolidating, professionals are looking for opportunity to sell at the top of the consolidation, and we look for opportunity to buy at the lower part of the consolidation. All right, so the market pattern and the key levels we allow forex traders to make a better trade because that's where the professionals are making their decisions. The horizontal channel is a very easy market pattern that trader can trade, but when one is trading, okay, uh, here we are, so price here, okay, we don't just sell, okay. This is a trading setup, so we see run all the way here. As he approaches the resistance zone, we say what? This is a trading setup because somebody sold it here before. Now the price is now in a resistance zone. If somebody bought it here before and the price returned back to that zone, you see it's a bullish zone, all right? Are you with me? So the tail, all right, are telling us support. Okay, the shadow are telling us resistance zone, all right? So if somebody sold it before, and if the price return back to that zone, all right, it's a trading setup. Okay, we will not sell straight away. We will use what we call multiple time frame trading method. All right, I'll put the link of that video, okay, in the description session. All right, so check it out, multiple time frame trading method. All right, so you may also understand what is a multiple time frame trading method. So the price came here, this is a trading set out. We'll now switch to the signal time frame and then uh, uh, go to the entry time frame and select a low risk entry point to trade it. So price at a resistance zone, use a top down trading method, all right? So you may say to me, Joe, what is happening now? The price at a support level, the level of 11010. So today, is the 25th, in fact, it's 26th of October now, because it passed midnight in London, 26th of October 2015, all right? The price now at the key level, 11010. Professional will give priority to bullish signal above the 11010 and bearish signal below the 11010. You see, another key level here. So if I receive a bullish signal here, I will be happy to take it. So I can use a tiny stop loss, high my stop loss, below the level of 11010. But look here. At that level, you see the gray line? So we are here now, yes or no, okay? Look what has happened here. Where the price, you see the tall candle that it brought the price down? Build down to the gray line, yes or no? Here we have again another tall candle, break it down to the same gray line, okay? Look what has happened here. Price was here, but it did below the gray line, and then went down to the pink line. So priority to bullish signal above the 11010, and priority to bearish signal below the 11010. So what we are looking for, so you see the green line here, what I will do now, my friend, hold on a second, all right? I will change the color of this, hopefully we'll see it, uh, uh, which color should I use now? I'm running out of uh, uh, color now. Uh, I want to change it to blue, okay? We change it to blue. That's the blue line, 11010, okay? Let's go now to the 10-minute time frame, my friend, and see whether we will see that blue line. Where's my blue line? Where's my blue line? It's not showing on my 10-minute time frame, okay? It's no big deal. Let's go to the 50-minute chart. Maybe we see that. Here it is. That's my blue line that I've drawn on the weekly chart. It's a key level, all right? So if we want to buy here on a 50-minute chart, what is the market pattern? So you remember, the biggest trading mistake is what? The violation of the market pattern on any time frame. 
So on a 50 minute chart, the price is in uh, in this, uh, if you accept this, a declining channel, yes or no, okay? So the declining channel, yes or no. So if you want to buy, what are the conditions? So it's a key level, you want to give priority to bullish signal. We can wait, okay? Allow it to run out, okay? All right? And then pull back, okay? And form maybe a higher low, all right? On the 50 minute chart, all right? Then we can switch to the five minute time frame, okay, to enter the trend. We, at the point where we are about to enter the trend, we want it to come maybe near the level of 11010. And then, all right, my friend, so break a ball and then pull back, retest this level. And then the common set trend line here is broken. And then, okay, start going up. We will switch time frame to the five minute time frame, okay, to enter the trend. But we can be a little bit patient, okay? All right, we can be a little bit patient. We can be a little bit patient. So you can wait, okay? You run up fast. Sometimes you may run up and go up the whole day, all right? That may be difficult for new traders to trade it, okay? So in normal condition, you go up a bit and then pull back, okay? And then we switch up frame to the five meter frame. And we can just wait. Is it going to be in a rising channel? If it's going to go up on the five minute time frame, after it went up and pulled back on the five minute time frame, you see that it start going in a rising channel, and then you can take it within the rising channel. All right, so priority to bullish signal above 11010, and the priority to bearish signal below the 11010. One can also use the TSCW24 Okay, monitor whether the, we will have okay a signal above the one one zero one zero, and then we take it from there. If the signal fell, we just come out. We don't want to violate the market pattern on the fifteen minute time frame where we want to buy, and we want to violate the market pattern on the five minute time frame where we want to uh, enter the trade. All right, it makes sense. If you are using three minute time frame, same same rule applies. But if the price D below, so that's why I say to trade. Be ready to buy and be ready to sell, okay? So, so the key level, priority to bullish signal above the key level, always a priority to bearish signal below. So if it D below that level, okay? So D below, break below, okay? And retest it and find a resistance right there. And we see it, it start going in a declining channel, we will sell instead. Priority to bullish signal above 11010, and priority to bearish signal below 11010. It's a key level, but now the price is in a declining channel. We cannot start buying it. If if one is buying like this, okay, it's a speculative. So you know that you are gambling a little bit, so nothing is telling you to buy now. So you know it's a key level. You say, okay, I will just buy it. If you are doing something like this, use a tiny stop loss, 15 pip, and uh, don't change the stop loss. Don't move it. They take you out. You say, all right, it didn't work. All right, it didn't work. Sometimes it may work beautifully, but you can remain patient sometimes. You can even wait, okay? You can be, some trader may be a little bit patient. He went up, okay? And then he pulled back, okay? You say, okay, I'm going to be a little bit patient. You can wait. After he pulled back, wait for the next higher low. And then you will look for opportunity to buy. As always, you use a top-down trading method, okay? So, break a ball, retest, okay? It went away, pull back, and then start going up. You are you don't want to challenge. You, want, you don't want to enter near this level. You wait for the first higher lows above somewhere here. But you, what you are trying to do, why you want to buy somewhere here, is that you want to hide your stop loss below the level of one one zero one zero, so that you don't use too much stop loss. It makes sense. So in order to start um, making better trade in forex, one must trade first near a key levels, right? Near a key levels, always. So draw the key level either on the yearly chart, quarterly chart, monthly chart, weekly chart, and then switch to the lower time frame so you can see your key levels. So if you are using a trading system and your trading system fire a buy signal, you want that buy signal to be at a key level or at a key support level, or you, you, you see a bearish a signal you want to have, you want the bearish signal to be on on here, okay? A resistance uh, a level or a key level. It makes sense? It is also powerful. The most important thing, the next thing that you want to do 
uh, to make a, to start making a better trading for us is the market pattern. Remember, on the weekly chart, the market pattern is a consolidation taking place here. So what is happening here? Traders sold it on top of the consolidation. It's going down. It's not here at the lower part of the consolidation. So when we are buying here, we need to be careful. The market may prefer to push it all the way to the lower part of the, okay, uh, the horizontal channel. Uh, right now, there is a key level here at 11010. We can zoom into it on the lower time frame as I did now. If I go to the five minute time frame, you see that, uh, okay, some traded, okay, somebody. So even on the five minute time frame, we still have, uh, okay, this channel here. All right. All right. It's the primary channel is out of it, it's going like this. Now, will it continue to go up or not? But the mistake that trader will also make is that now the time in London is midnight 25. We recommend to TST traders to wait until London is open at 8 a.m. tomorrow and then wait the first 30 minutes before placing your first trade. All right, wait for London to open if you want to trade four hours. All right, London is open at 8 a.m. London time and then okay, wait the first 30 minutes and then you see sometime. Everything will align nicely for you, and then you will trade it. If you are trading Forex, you must constantly check Forex Factory. The economy news can change the dynamics of the market, okay? Especially the high-impact economy news. This is the first part of this video about how to start making okay better trade in Forex. With this information, some traders will start improving their trade. So, you want a signal, you receive a bullish signal, you want to enter a bullish trade, you ask the question, is the signal at a key level? Is it a bullish signal? Is it at a support level? Okay? All right? Do not violate the market pattern and work on these two things and see whether you will improve your trade. I will be recording the second part soon and I will highlight to you another thing that you need to know and so you may start making better trade in forest all right so for this week all right very important for the euro dollar on the weekly chart traders must give priority to bullish signal above the level of 11010 and priority to bear signal below the level of 11010 there is another key level here the orange line here if you start going down below the level of 11010 watch out for 10872 and the pink line somewhere near uh the pink line is somewhere near the level of uh, one zero eight one two. All right. This is the end of this video about uh, all right uh, how to start making better trade in forex a uh, part uh, one. See you in part uh, uh, two. If you like this video, please give us the thumbs up. If you dislike it, okay, please give us the thumbs down. If you love this video, feel free to share it on Google Plus, on Twitter, and also on Facebook. If you love our video, all right, feel free to subscribe, okay, to our channel. There is a link in the description section where you can subscribe to our channel. We wish you the very best in your trading, and until the next time, enjoy yourself and be very happy. We are the TSTW24 traders, talking about how to start making better trades in Forex, part one. See you in part two. Thank you.